Good evening. Welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. Tonight we have Lindsay Schoolcraft on, who's been in uh, mostly doing solo stuff now, but you, uh, for a while you were in Cradle Filth doing some yes. work. Seven years, yes. That, so that's like just a little bit of time. That's some time, yes. <laughs> we'll talk, we can talk about that too, but I like to we'll focus more on your solo stuff is kind of where I was going with that. But to start off, let's kind of, can you give us a breakdown of kind of what kind of music you do? A little, you probably maybe can put in better words than I would. Sure, yeah. So for my solo work, um, it's mainly like ethereal gothic metal or just ethereal gothic, sure. Um, so I released um, my debut album back in 2019 and I co-wrote it with Rocky Gray, who is the original drummer of Evanescence. Um, everyone knows who that is. <laughs> Yep. Um, and then, um, yeah, it's been a wild journey, um, you know, been slowly working on new music for that. Going to probably put out some singles this year. And then mainly now my full-time focus is a chamber black metal band called Antiqua that is like kind of, I guess you, you could call it a super group, but it, it was founded by me and Zenwire, who is the singer, uh, lead singer of a progressive metal band from Australia called Nea Blaviscaris. So him and I are slowly making that happen. We're writing the album right now, but yeah, I mean, I, gosh, I'm full-time singer and harpist. I play on a lot of other people's albums. Yeah. And, we've got a bunch of things yeah. to dive into with you. You got yeah, an I interesting do a lot. resume, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's talk, actually, before I forget, we'll go back into your harp. We'll harp on that later. Uh -huh. okay, that's a bad joke. I'm a dad. I can do that. Okay. Um, the puns. <laughs> so working with Rocky, which is kind of interesting because he was, didn't he write was Evanescence originally and then like left because he wanted a different direction was that story? yeah he he was on Fallen the song Tourniquet on Fallen was his baby um so he was like a main composer in that track yeah and he was with them for the open door which was the second album that uh it's my favorite absolute favorite and then he you know touring is exhausting and it wasn't mm -hmm. for him anymore and now he's in the film industry he does a lot of horror films like he directs produces and does the soundtracks yeah does a really that's great cool. job yeah so i remember hearing and you never know what's really true that's why i was like the, the show you ask people it was more like an artistic like he wanted different types of music to know where it was going or whatever and it would make sense yeah. because this music is that you you guys did is different so it would make sense right. it was a little, little, little different you know whereas evan essence was going more almost kind of like a poppier and, you totally know, pop just, yeah and mm -hmm. it, as, as time was going on it's kind of evolving which is you know artists evolve but i could see where it's more of a left turn mm -hmm, absolutely so that was my my little side question here. all right so you play harp how long did you start young young or no i didn't um i mean music's been in my life my whole life um mm -hmm. you know between singing and learning different instruments i've had my first harp i still have her obviously uh for about 10 years now and I was getting really serious into it. And then I was hired to be in Cradle Filth and I was touring six to eight months of the year for almost seven years straight. So due to that, I couldn't get good. You know, you can't travel right. with a harp. So, and oh. so, yeah. So in the last three years, it's been taken very seriously. <laughs> oh, so this is totally, cause I, so I, see, it feels like the harp thing you've gotten brought into is like a family thing. Like somebody had one in the in a dressing like one of the rooms in the house you know what i'm saying because it's like the harp is not like the recorder think. everybody does that it's not a, it's not a, yeah. a take home instrument like everybody signs up the trumpet and so i guess i'm get ahead of the story then but you played keyboards and sang and you've been doing that mm -hmm. your whole life then uh no i actually didn't pick up piano seriously until i was 21. <sighs> have you been breathing your whole life can we just start with something here give me something <laughs> <laughs> so singing singing my okay. whole life singing sure. your whole life thank you yeah there you go <laughs> Well, it's just because you're very, you sound very good. It just feels like you've, it's been like a lifelong, like, you know, progression to your life. So how did you end up with Cradle Filth and then, you know, keyboards? How did that evolve to that point, at least? So we get oh, man. I'm looking back at that now. Um, I got the call and it was just kind of like answering to the call. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm going to be any good. I was in like my first semester at university. I mean, I have classical training in both singing and piano. And I was like, I don't know if I can do this. And I tried out and I got the job. And it was really strange because the band is based in England and I'm all the way in, in near well, Toronto. That's something like, what circle do you travel in where they're calling you for a tryout? With Cradle Filth and you're you know, a student and then they're like, how would they get your number? How, like, how would that I evolve you? It happened because like they, when I was hired, they had a tour coming up in America, like North America. Yep. That's where I was located. And at the time, the former now former guitarist Paul Allender was living in Minnesota and he asked 
someone out there to do it. Melissa mm -hmm. for lack of she was in with visions of Atlantis and quite a few other bands. And she was like, I can't do this, but you should choose her. And they chose me. It was just, I was very lucky. It was very, very lucky. Right place, right time, made it work. Um, and it's just, it's never a position I saw myself in. Like I, I took it gracefully and I was very grateful for it. And I- Were you a fan of them before? Did no, you... I hated Cradle of Filth in high school. I it was like some of the worst music I've ever heard. Looking back now, I think I was just talking about Danny's voice. No offense to him, but um, <laughs> it's just not my cup of tea. And um, I like the music. I love the symphonic element of it. I mm -hmm. love Sarah Jezebel uh, Deva's voice. I love her. Um, but I just was like, I'm like, I don't like this band at all. Like I always used to joke and be like, Demi Borgir is better. And they, to this day, they're still my favorite metal band. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just didn't like them in high school. And then I ended up working with them for seven years. And I'm like, this is strange. <laughs> be careful what you say now, who, who, what you like, what you don't like. Another seven years will be locked up with them. Yeah, who knows? You know, maybe, uh, oh gosh, what's like five don't fingers even, punch will call me or something. Don't even say it. Don't even put it out there. Don't put it out <laughs> in, the, in the galaxy. You know how that goes. Right? Yeah, yeah. So obviously you grew to get used to the band, obviously, for seven years and build a tolerance or an acceptance or something or <laughs> learn to enjoy. I don't know where you, where you got with that. Yeah. Were you part of the writing process? Because you became a full-time member. Eventually, um, yeah, I mean... Like I, I did contribute, a, a, I did contribute, I guess, quite a bit, not, not all of it, but like the album Hammer of the Witches, I was lucky enough to have a little bit of a say in that. And then a very, very small part in the album that came after in 2017, which was called Cryptoriana. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like there was, there was some input, um, not all of it, like not all the input that I had made it to the final cut, but that's part of being in a band where, you know, people know what's best for that band and its sound. And if I wrote all the music for Cradle, it would sound very, very different. So, you know, it is what it is. So you've recently left them, I know yes. good terms as, as friends, because yeah. you just wanted to do something different, you know? Oh, my was, mental health was in the ground. So it, I had to do what was best for me. It was like touring or just, that was that the hard part or just the- I had burnout. Uh, we did, in two years, we did two world tours. And on top of that, I was, uh, going to school for digital marketing, which like I was very excited about, but also releasing my solo album. And just by the end of it, there just wasn't a drop of anything left in me. And we had just finished another world tour and they wanted to write. And I'm like, I don't have it in me. And I was very honest. And I'm just like, you know what? Like, I think the best decision for both of us, like I need time. I need to heal and find myself again and get my energy and my health back. And you guys are a machine that's ready to go and that won't slow down. So I think this is just the best decision for both of us. That must have been a surprise for them and for you. Yes and to, no. To hear it out loud out of your mouth being like, did you say that? I mean, you know yeah. it's right, but you kind of, you say it out loud, it sounds weird. It makes it real. And It was, it was like, it was like one of the hardest decisions I've ever made in my life. And, and I think the biggest, the biggest upset, like I was, well, not upset, but the biggest concern and worry I had was that I was going to let down the fans, but they were all really, really supportive, like really like still like my fans and super cool people. So I was so grateful for that. If they're really your fans, they're not going to, they're going to be supportive of you. And if they don't like it, they weren't really your fans to begin with. Exactly. They're just kind of jerks. They're, just kind of, they're kind of just jerks. Pacifiers. <laughs> they're just following my accounts to see if Danny pops up on it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah basically, yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's not a true fan. I mean, a fan supports an artist wherever they go. Exactly. Know? I agree. And, and they let an artist change and grow. And, and uh, so, yeah, that's good. Um, so the harp, so you start getting more and more into it. You take lessons for that. How did, how did that go? I've only ever had two formal lessons. One from a harpist out here in Toronto, um, yeah. and then from um, uh, Kristen Agretta Copley. She's like Obama and Beyonce and like Enya's harpist, and she gave me a lesson, and it was the one of the best two hours of my life events to ever happen. She's super informative, and I think she appreciates that I had so many questions um, because well, I can you imagine. Know, it's not yeah. a lot of people to ask. I also didn't know they had harpists to begin with. Those guys had harpists, so that's another. Yeah, like she's another. like she's like royalty, um, in the in the harp world, which is just really really cool. So, um, yeah, it was it was just such a an honor to work with her, 
And um, oh my gosh, I have dyslexia. I hope it. I hope I said that right. Is it Kirsten? It's. I don't think it's Kirsten. <laughs> I'm so bad at like Kirsten and Kirsten. Oh, there like, goes her online lessons. Literally, like <laughs> one letter away. Yeah, it is Kirsten. Oh, thank Kirsten, God, I'm not, not a not like Kirsten or something. Or I don't know. It could be Kirsten. No, no, I don't not, know. Huh? She's awesome. She's harp royalty. So having a lesson from her was just like a really big deal. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm very, I guess, aware in my practicing and I'm trying to grow and develop and it's been a wild adventure for sure. It doesn't seem like you're uh, like new. It feels like it's, that's what I'm saying. It feels like even like classically, like it's trained like a lifestyle, like you started as a child. Like, where would you have picked that up? Do you just be like, I'm going to do a harp. Like, yeah, it was weird. It was kind of like, I started turning more towards folk music in my early twenties. And I was a big fan of like, you know, the Lord of the Rings soundtrack and these big symphonic elements with with uh, I love them. I have them. I have them. So yeah. Yeah, you know. And then I I heard the album Vesper Time by Bjork, and there's mm -hmm. so much harp on that album. To this day, that's like one of my top five albums ever. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take up the harp. This is beautiful. So that was really it. Was really cool. And it just happened. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fascinating because I, I never talked to you. I mean, it's not like oh, I just pick up the harmonica or I'll just pick up another instrument. I mean, that's right. You're, that's a commitment instrument, you know. It is. It's it's a big commitment. I can't, I still don't even feel like I'm near the playing level that I should be. But it's it's a whole. You can't treat it like the piano. Like it's a whole other instrument that you need to kind of you know refine your technique and and breathe with. It's crazy. How long does it take to change the strings and keep it in tune, huh? <laughs> oh my god, it takes me like. Like I could have a whole hour. I own five harps now and I could just spend a whole hour tuning them. And you know, weather in Canada, like that's always changing, so. Yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't even imagine, like with my guitar, I got frustrated after a couple times, you right. know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, oh, all the strings and it's just a nightmare. It's like a, it's like a building and doing all the windows. Yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> insane, by the time you get done, you're like, oh, forget it, I'm just gonna go to bed. Yeah, yeah, it's like, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> have you, have like, you played out? Have you like done performances now with it? At this yeah, point? yeah. Yeah, absolutely. just recordings. Okay, I didn't know yeah, if you yeah. done just recordings or if you've done some live stuff. And some because the world's stuff. so weird right now, it's kind of, yeah. you know. Yeah, but it's more fun. I've, I'm definitely drawn more towards it than piano, which is like the main instrument I've worked on all these years. So, so you, so your last album though, was it Martyr? Is it, is that what it's called? It was your Martyr last album. Was, it was Martyr was 2019. And then I did World's last Away last year in 2020. Year. Yeah. So, so that one was a little different. Mm -hmm. And each year you're kind of doing different style of musics too. <laughs> I try not to, but yeah, sometimes. <laughs> it feels like it. And then you're, you're guests on about a bunch of albums. Yeah. You become a cartoon character. Yes, I do. I do. Very Spell cool. Craft. It's a very cool drawing too. How'd yes. that come about? Oh, it was the strangest thing. Um, so there, in the story, there's the daughter of the, so there's the guy who's in a band and he has a family and his daughter, her name's Lilith. And she falls in love with this uh, guy at high school who's like the super nerdy prog drummer. And because of that, and my partner who is a like progressive heavy metal drummer, everyone just kept tagging us in these cartoons. Mm -hmm. And then, and so then I just contacted the, the illustrator and creator, his name's JP. And, and I was just like, dude, this is awesome. Like, I love it. Like, hi, let's be friends. And the day I got a hold of him, it was in Finland. Had no idea he was from Finland. And he's like, oh, if I would have known, I would have came out to the show tonight. So we just became friends. And then I was really honored because, you know, he could have picked, there's so many incredible women in heavy metal. And out of all of them, like he picked me to be this character. And it just like, I'm forever grateful, forever grateful for that. So yeah, like it's, it's really cool. It's surreal. Really Sometimes cool. I like forget and it's like, oh yeah, I have to remind myself. <laughs> and it's good. It's really good. It's really good drawing too. It's not like it's a cliche. It's a really good. Yeah. He puts a lot character. of love into his cartoon characters. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, you know, I, we, when we were developing her together, we're just kind of like, we should joke that she's a vampire. And I had like little fangs at one point and yeah, it was fun. It was fun developing that character with him. <laughs> it feels like you have a life of things that you weren't expecting, like being Cradle of Phil, play harp, being a cartoon character. Yeah, like never in my wildest dreams would I would have thought that like 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, that is just insane. So can we talk about the creation of Martyr and then we'll copy the other two albums first? Sure, yeah. What the steps involved in that one? Like creative, like who you write that one with? Mar like martyr that yeah one? I'll start with that one yeah oh gosh that was like a long that was a big long like lifetime build up um because martyr is kind of like oh gosh what year did you start working on it 2006 
this was probably like 10 years of music building up into being a solo album and the real fire under my butt was when Rocky contacted me and said we should work on music together mm-hmm. and then you know we we did the cover of lullaby the cures lullaby together yep. which ended up on the end of this album and then we just kept has a lot of rave reviews online from a lot of people they like that yeah i'm so happy i was so like oh no nervous because that's a hard yeah. one to eat. talk about fans right yeah yeah they kick like, you off the planet if you did a bad job Oof, tell oh, you trust me i'd be canceled for life like it just yeah you have to yeah. be so careful and um we just Clean kept yeah Oof, we kept you know um yeah you have to be careful with covers and uh we we just kept writing together and then because of cradles demanding touring schedule and what have mm-hmm. you that album was kind of like pause start pause start for like almost two years it was really stressful really fun like it was something that i was always there's something called the tour blues where you come home from tour and you're like depressed for a few weeks because you're grieving the loss of creating something amazing which is being on tour you know like this live show that you put all this work into mm-hmm. and now it's done where me, like I didn't have an issue beating the tour blues because I had something to look forward to when I went home. Yeah. And um, it was when I was home, it was such a magical experience, especially working with Rocky and getting the team on board for that, for the, you know, the symphonic elements and stuff and having a children's choir. Like it was just, it was such a dream come true. So then it took, it took a whole year once it was done to release it. So it was like a really it was a really slow burn, you know, like it just, it felt like it took forever, but finally when it was out there, like it was well received and I, I was just really grateful that it happened and Rocky was happy. And then we, we got, we got nominated for Juno, which was That's like, really cool. Yeah. We weren't, we weren't expecting it. I just kind of submitted and I was like, well, you know, you submit and forget about it type of scenarios. And then all of a sudden your phone blows up one day and you're like, what is going on? Um, so we were really, like Rocky hadn't been nominated for Juno since 2004. So he was like super excited mm-hmm. about it. Um, he wasn't expecting it either, you know, cause we're just doing our thing over here, you know? So um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a long, long process. It was a long road. And then of course, last year, the, for my 10th anniversary, I did like a, a strip back acoustic entirely on harp with strings Um album and it literally took only three months to put together and record well more like yeah maybe four months maybe depending on how you look at the arranging and stuff um and then it was just out there and it was super quick but it it felt great it was exactly what like I wanted to do Mm. with my music so I was just like let's do it but yeah, a learning process nonetheless. <laughs> so this year's just singles. We're just doing singles. You just singles? Because, yeah, because on your yeah. website, you've got a bunch of different things on there. So the continuity of when things are released, it's just everything's like so back back. Is this album, this album, yeah. this album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So try to understand what your newest thing. So right now, what are you working on? I'm currently working on a track with uh, Sarah Jezebel Deva. So she was the longest running um, female voice in uh, Cradle Filth. And we're working on a song together. So that's cool. And then I'm slowly chipping away at another song that there's really no deadline, probably later this year. The song that it didn't fit on the album, but I think it should just be a standalone track. So yeah, that's that's what's I've been slowly working on that, taking my time. It's only February, I got time. <laughs> you seem to be very busy. So the digital marketing thing, where, where did that come from? That's mm. so I, I got really lucky. I got in with a, it's called Savvy Musician Academy and it's a digital marketing and e-commerce school for musicians. It's honestly, in my opinion, like the best one out there. They really teach you what you need to know to be successful. It's like, it's like, it's entrepreneurial boot camp for musicians. It was one of the best things that ever happened to me. And I love it. It's just like, when you know what, what entails marketing and advertising and then you strengthen it. It was such an empowering experience. Mm -hmm. And the reason it happened was because that whole year that I didn't like the album was martyr, the album was done and it wasn't released is because I was just hoping, like I was shopping myself to record labels, hoping that I would get a record deal, but there was a huge shift in the record labels then. And I just fell to the wayside. And I was like, you know what? I'm done waiting for a record label. I'm just going to, I'm just going to release this independently. Like I can do it. I know I can do it. And then within the same week, 
Leah. So she's like a Celtic fantasy metal artist. She owns the school. Like she totally, it's so empowering. You know, another woman creates this, this school. Yeah. Um, and she, you know, I got enrolled. She told me about it. I got enrolled. And that is what helped me release it independently, very successfully and build a team around me. And then also because of that, without even really expecting it to happen, I, I became like a small independent record label out of this room here. So it's just, it, it was really cool. You know, not many people can say that, but I've just been very lucky to be in that position. And I'm so glad I didn't sign with a record label because if I look at my earnings now, it's like, oh my gosh, like a record label would have taken more of that or half of that, or maybe even more. And it's like, I'm not willing to part with that. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's great that all artists are doing that and saving yourself or releasing that, you know, yeah. you get a, getting something of me like a distribution type of deal or something else on the other end or markets you can't do or something weird, but holding on to all your stuff and being the main person and then putting it out there is the best. Yeah, it was very, it was a big learning curve. It was very eye opening and uh, I learned a lot. Like I learned a lot. And I'll, there's a lot of, you know, when you do those big things, it's like, okay, I'll never do this again, but I'll definitely do this again. So yeah, I'm grateful it happened. Definitely. How many, how many like young girls are like, oh, can you do an album for me now? I, I requested you to be on your label. Yes. Okay. So that was the, the other big thing when it's just like, I launched the label. Like I finally, because it was you are now in that position of being this, this strong, empowering woman, I guess you independent, <laughs> and you are, and then you have the independent label. Look, look at some younger and you're looking up and you've done all this stuff. So yeah. you are now that person. So people will be like, Hey, this is a person to reach out to. Yeah, it was, it was big in the beginning. It started last summer, me and my assistant at the time we launched it and made it public. And uh, the request that we got it was unreal. I, I just blew my mind how many musicians are willing to kind of hand over their career to a complete stranger. Cause some people didn't know me, but mm. I, I did get a lot of requests and there was a lot of artists that I was like, I really believe in what you're doing. So I actually started, uh, my record label is a very non-traditional. I've turned into a consulting like uh, firm for people who just want to work on um, like personal and business development uh, from mm -hmm. a musician standpoint. So I've been, you know, I have lots of clients now. It's been really cool. Like it's different. So yes, I am a very busy person. <laughs> as you so, said. Before. Yeah. I don't, I'm like, so when are you going to do your, your harp and rock and roll there? How are you going to find time to, if it's a full business. You gotta, you gotta yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a, I have a really fantastic team in place. I have a really amazing assistant. Um, I work in seasons. So like the last two weeks have been business. Um, that's why you're talking to me now. Interviews, I guess, are part of business and promotion. But then starting next week for about three weeks, it's just Monday to Wednesday, I'll just be writing music. And then Good. Thursday, Friday, there's like a few hours here and there tying up loose ends, business stuff. You know, I find as creatives, we just want to, especially going through the, you know, making a painting or a movie or a whole album, we just want to like start it and finish it as quickly as possible. And like, that's the only thing that we do, but I've learned that successful people work in seasons and you just have to kind of choose like one day a month or one day a week to work on that one thing and just chip away at it, like dedicate the time. And I think that's like, people are like, you're so busy. How do you do it all? And I'm like, you say that, but I only work five hours a day, Monday to Friday. And then I watch Netflix all night. <laughs> <laughs> like I get to enjoy myself too. Like, don't think I'm that busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's interesting like to, to see what an artist, how they write in the time period. Cause some people do like, they keep a guitar around, you know, mm -hmm. or they write all day and something comes up, they take notes or some people take an hour aside, you know, recently I heard, you know, every day for an hour, I turn everything off. I just play guitar and see what happens. You right. Know? So everyone has a different way of doing it. Some people just, mm -hmm. it comes to them. When yeah. Walking. Oh yeah. Wow. It's songwriting is strange. And I'm kind of waiting for that probably near the end of this week, I'll start getting song ideas and I'm like, no, I have to finish this business thing. How, like, ah. how are you writing? Are you doing melodies and vocals? Are you doing keyboards? Do you play another instrument? I don't know about like you decided to learn guitar or something else too, or some kind of trombone. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Tuba? No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some really big box. instrument, probably the big bass yeah. one. Church organ. Definitely. Um, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. It's mainly for my solo stuff. It's definitely lyrics and melody first. And then for Antiqua, it's like more of the string melodies come first or choir. It's very weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm only, I, I'm, I'm mainly like, let's have a strong melody and figure out the rest from there. That's me. <laughs> well, it is because your, your music is, you know, like I said, it's on some level it is it's kind of like dark Enya or Enya-like and a little heavier maybe. 
no. Um, and with the other stuff is you put your voice goes over, like I said, like a, a really heavy. So it's like, there's a thought of like, how do you write to that? Like, how do you put all those pieces together? Cause it's almost like two different songs that you got to blend yeah. together, two different styles and they got to work together. That's what it always feels like, especially in like a symphonic metal type uh, and any types like, cause like Gothic metal is symphonic. And then this chamber black metal band Antiqua is symphonic, you know? So like, it's like, you're, you're finding a way to blend the two because like, I could just write like, music of just my vocals and the strings and the piano forever but then there has to come a point where someone comes in and they just they write all the band like the guitar bass drums whatever else like it's like blending the two it's a big it's a big project but eventually you make it work you know because yeah, a lot of you need to do more of your melody type of stuff without anything behind it could be one of your other albums and similar you know what i mean yeah absolutely they I tell people that i'm like if i didn't if I didn't hire Rocky, it would just be ethereal gothic music. There'd be no metal on the end. Of this, right? <laughs> You're like, can you guys turn it down? I can't think of myself sing. Get a whole big band <laughs> behind you, right? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> One have, day. You, have you done a lot of your being a front person? Because before you were actually, you know, keyboardist, but yeah, singer. But being the the, the main person, the band now. Yeah. Does that it's change. It's fun. It's, I mean, I definitely, when we had the shows back in December, 2019, I was super burned out and it was like, it was fun and I loved it. Being a front person felt really good, but I feel like I wasn't at my full potential on those two shows. Um, you know, but then the pandemic hit and I haven't really been able to do anything. Like we had show offers for like South America and Australia and Ireland and stuff and that the pandemic hit and we couldn't do any of it. So it's just been kind of like, okay, well, we can't do live music. So I'm going to work on the record label and writing music and coaching people. And, you know, who would you, who would you tour with? Who would I tour with? We, we ugh. like style wise. Cause I'm just, I'm, I'm a lot more new to, to symphonic metal myself. I'm yeah. just learning yeah. it. I just talked to Imperial age recently. They're symphonic metal, right? Oh yeah. I have to that. check yeah, it. Yeah, I've been yeah. meaning to check them out. I've been terrible, like within my own community. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think when we were discussing South America, they were saying, oh, did you want to tour with, I think it was Serenia or Draconian? And I was like, Serenia would work. Draconian would make more sense for Antiqua, but Antiqua is, you know, we don't even have an, an album out yet. We only yeah. have a single. So it was like, it was really weird, but it just, you know, didn't come to fruition. But in time, in due time, eventually. This it will is happen. curious. Cause like, you know, you've seen like other, like in the more in the rock industry, different bands, you know? that would match up you like i wasn't expecting that to be like a funk band be open for a metal band or whatever because there are different that overlap but yeah. in this field i'm like i really wouldn't know <laughs> it's okay because <laughs> there's a crisscross somewhere yeah know? yeah yeah absolutely yeah i'll keep that in mind when i explain things again <laughs> just to be right? safe <laughs> so really just to kind of wrap it up like where so you're just working on your on your, your singles and that's it right now Moving yeah forward. Yeah, definitely. I mean, because of this record label, uh, definitely focused a lot on my digital, like online business. That's, that's huge. Um, and then Are you uh, taking clients right now. Yeah, yeah, I do. I have a few. Yeah. I'm actually currently, I've just been hired as project manager and marketing for an Indiegogo campaign. You sound um, like a grown up. I know. I'm a rock and roll so, singer. You sound like a I sound so <laughs> professional. Where are my glasses? I need to put my oh, glasses see? on. Then I can just be like, all right, project manager, here we go. Here she is. It's going to be like I thought it was going to be. Oh, those are real professional. <laughs> I know, right? I look like a real librarian. It's crazy. No. So that's like what's going on right now. And then I'll take the glasses off and then rock start. Unless you know the Dewey Decimal System. Yeah, you're kind of throwing me off yeah. here. <laughs> no, but yeah, there's the the singles for my solo stuff. So I'm just doing that kind of in my, my free time when it feels good. And then, yeah, it's been mainly Antiqua, just composing the last few songs for the debut Antiqua album. Okay. If people want to reach you on the consulting thing, because obviously we're talking about now and there might be somebody going, Hey, yeah, yeah. Would they, totally. would they reach out to you on your website under just a contact or like, yeah. If you go to lindsayschoolcraft.com, like all my stuff's there, including mm -hmm. my email and you can just email there. And if you're interested, like just hit me up and I'll let you know if I, I have the time I'm almost hitting capacity right now. Cause if I take on any more, I won't be able to do music, but you never know. There might be a free spot. So just hit me up. <laughs> I'll just put it there. So is that the only, so besides that, where else are you? Uh, like, no, you're on Facebook and yeah, yeah, Lindsay Twitter? Schoolcraft at Facebook. Yeah, Twitter. It's L I N D Z R I O T. So Lynn's Riot is the the screen name. Same with uh, Instagram. Instagram. But if you just, saw, yeah, yeah. If you if you put in Lindsay, it's Lindsay with an A. Put Lindsay Schoolcraft into any of those. I'll be the first one to show up. So you'll Twitter. I don't, I don't. I don't. I always avoid Twitter. So I always never check the Twitter for people. I never. Yeah. It's the only thing I don't do. I'm like. Ugh. 
Yeah. <laughs> Twitter to me is like a bunch of people standing on a box in, a, in one room and everyone's yelling the same thing at the yeah. same time at everybody. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's still so here. noisy. I, yeah, I it is even... noisy. Yeah, uh, everyone wants uh, to call me. My emotions aren't enough together for that thing. It's too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not emotionally available for Twitter. <laughs> Damn, it's closed. The signs there. I just can't take it. It's too much. Too much noise. You. Yeah, I agree. Oh, this has been awesome. Um, yeah. an impromptu thing. I want to thank you and you know introduce yeah. you. You have more things coming out, reach out and we'll promote your, your album or your single. Yeah, you know. that would be great. Absolutely. Well, you you know, you have Curtis's contact, so anytime, like well, I'm down. I don't know when you have new stuff out though, so if you want to reach out too. <laughs> oh, I have to I have to call you. My people have to. <laughs> no, no, no. If, if I see something, I will, but I'm saying people. if you think of something coming up, you don't say yeah, my people call me because I'm just my yeah. own people. Like, you so are like, your if own you have something prior coming up, you'd reach out to me and say, hey, I got something coming up because I won't know that. I don't no, have those abilities. <laughs> All good. No, I'll let You're you know, me. definitely. No, no, we should we should do something for Antiqua and get Zen on here too. That would be really fun. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll support all the air acts with a bunch of ones. It's all good. Okay. We'll them, okay. I want to thank you for being on tonight. Yeah, you can have a good night. Yeah, you too. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Take okay. care. Bye, Bye now. Bye.